again and welcome to this next look of Curious Turtles Film Wash Colour Effects for After Effects Volume 4. So we're going to start off uh, with this shot here and I just want to start to build up some slightly more complex uh, looks. So let's, let's start with something fairly straightforward here. So even though all of these colour effects here will actually look good on their own, one of the things I like to do is I like to mix them together. So um, let's take a quick look at what the difference is between uh, the folder that's named Film Wash Volume 4 and Film Wash Volume 4 8-bit. So there's actually only one small difference. Let's uh, come up and create a couple of different layers here. The first one is going to be called Portra 1 and let's just duplicate that one. I call this one Portra 1 32-bit. Okay, so at the moment we're working in a project that's 8 bits per channel. So that means that our total number of colors that we have available to us is about 16.7 million colors, which is quite a fine sort of palette. Uh, but as we start to build up certain things, you know, we can find that um, we can start getting banding, especially in areas where, you know, we don't, we have a very small, subtle changes such as, such as skies. Now as we move up to 16-bit, and 32-bit, our color palette gets greatly expanded. So in 16-bit, we start to work with uh, with trillions of colors instead of millions of colors. And 32-bit is a completely different beast in itself because we're, we're working in uh, linear color space instead. So it means that if we, um, let's just show you what that means. If I come in, add another adjustment layer. Let's just do a couple of uh, couple of quick things here. If I come to color correction, go to levels, what I'm going to do with this level here is I'm just going to completely blow those levels out. So let's take that to 128. So you can see I've completely blown my uh, levels out there. Come back, create another levels command here. And then if I bring my output white back to the same as we had this before. So what I've done really in a, is in effect, just sort of brought those levels back in. I can turn my adjustment layer on and off here and we won't see any difference going on in our, um, in our image. So this is me working at 32 bit. So if I work at eight bit now and turn this down, you'll see that we get a very, very different look. All of these over bright stuff have been uh, completely clipped out so that even if we use other effects to try and bring those back in, you know, once those colors are clipped, they're, um, they're clipped for good. And even bringing this into 16 bit isn't going to matter. So, you know, that's, that's really the importance of, um, of being able to work in 32 bit is, you know, being able to have that ability to uh, blow colors out and then bring them back afterwards with, uh, with other effects. So that's why in Film Wash Volume 4, we have two different folders here. We have our color folders up here, one to five. Those are our uh, color effects folders. These are either going to be 32-bit compatible or 8-bit compatible. So the only difference is, is that the 8-bit actually has, has one more bit of functionality that the 32-bit doesn't have. But it's something that you can do manually yourself. But uh, let's, let's just look at what that is. So let's take it out, look at our film stock homage. And we'll come to our Kodak Portra 1. So I click on that there. You can see in our list of filters now, we have something that's slightly, uh, slightly troublesome. What we have is a little warning mark over here next to our smooth step. And this just means that one of the filters that we've got in there isn't 32-bit compatible. So if I turn that to 8-bit, come back in there, it's all fine. If I turn it to 16 bit, come back in, it's all fine. If I turn it to 32 bit, all of a sudden we've got that warning light going on. Now, generally, this isn't actually going to be a huge problem because what you're doing here with the film wash is you're doing the sort of final, uh, the final step. This isn't going to be a a, a biggie uh, anyway. Um, now, what this actually gives us, it gives us one more control. So using the um, what's called the uh, the 8 bit but even though you know most of these are 16 bit as well so what this actually gives us is another slider 
that lets us bring in what I like to call soft contrast. So if we just take that up just a tiny bit there, let's take that to 35. We can see that we've just given us a bit more contrast in the um, in the dark areas and a little bit more in the light. Most of the midtones are staying, you know, the same as they were. This just gives again, it's that that little small um, small little touch that uh, that looks really gorgeous. Uh, let's give the exact same effect, but this time we're going to be using the uh, the thirty two bit one and let's go back to our homage and come to portrait one again now these are the only, the same effect but the only thing they don't have is that same um increased soft contrast controls that's really the only difference between the ones that are labeled 8-bit though in reality all of the color effects are actually 16-bit uh cool well let's uh get rid of the 32-bit one there and let's just come in and we'll add another adjustment layer. Um, what I also like to do is I also like to um, sort of try and balance things up a little bit first before we then go in and create the big color effect. Just with this one, what I want to do is make it a little bit warmer. Uh, I'm going to push it quite a bit far, but let's just use the uh, the daylight to, to tungsten three here. Uh, and that's warmed everything up. It's made everything. Let's just look at that. It's warmed everything up a little bit too much. So let's just, take that back to maybe 75 so you can see if we want to we can get really really warm a little bit too sunburnt there but cool that's that's nice back at 75 there so that's uh that's daylight to tungsten and then let's uh let's see how that looks with our portrait well that's looking a little bit harsh so let's and let's just mix that back a little bit there so uh actually let's keep that around about 57 so let's take a look at our before and after you can see it's much warmer much nicer cool and let's um let's actually take a look at our next shot uh because we've worked a little bit on that one let's look at the next shot here which is just this is one of those shots which um you know, at the moment it's, it's uh, it was shot at dusk and things were starting to get a little bit flat. And there's a bit of noise in the image there and it's just a bit of a, a kind of blah shot. It's not doing anything for me. So let's um let's come in and we'll, we'll actually do something uh, that's a little bit more fun with this one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of come in and create our main tone on it. Uh, so let's come up. As we've done before we'll do a new adjustment layer and let's look at some of our cross process ones which we uh, we haven't really looked at all that much uh, and i'm going to come and let's just look at this one see if this works the bright faded magenta this makes everything a lot lighter and gives it a slight sort of cyan magenta tone to it so already it's looking a little bit a little bit more fun And let's just knock that back just a little bit there. So take that to 65. That's looking good. Cool. All right. And um, let's take it a little bit further as well. So add another adjustment layer. Actually, let's call this one bright faded magenta. And let's call this one. What should we have a look at this? Well, I, I actually, I kind of like that pink that we've got going on there. Um, so if we can find something that's going to help out with the pink a bit more, uh, I'd like that. So let's look at our um, expired film. We've got a couple of expired pinks. Let's look at expired pink one. That's looking uh, that's looking kind of nice. I, I, I kind of enjoy that. And let's look at expired pink two. Oh, that's there we go. So that's that's actually probably the one I'm going to go for. So this is much more sort of faded film. All of a sudden, let's look at where we're coming from which is there and going there that's that's really that's giving it a very um very pronounced sort of look going on there so let's call this expired pink too and let's mix that in just a little bit again so it's a little bit harsh and if it is a bit harsh we can come in and just just mix it in about 70 that's good we will also it's a little bit too 
too pink, so let's take some of the saturation down there to about 17. Of course, we've come from here now to here. That's working quite nicely. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to start to try and focus the viewer a little bit more because at the moment, what's going on is everything is, is kind of just a little bit bright and evenly bright. And um, what actually happens is that the viewer's eye is immediately drawn to the brightest area and works works your way from there. So we've got this big patch of something that's, that's very, very bright where actually we want to be focused on the uh, the girl over here. So it's actually probably quite a good time to, uh, to start looking at some of our vignettes again. Uh, I'm gonna come and have a look at extras first though, because we've got this skyline enhance, which is a, a really nice uh, and very, very useful effect. Um, it's one of those ones where you make sure that there's no other layers selected and let's just double click on skyline enhance and again it's got a couple of controls just like the vignettes we can control how far the skyline comes down and where it fades off and what direction we've got it going on in so as you can probably tell this is designed to, to kind of help uh, where you've got a, a quite a weak skyline, you just want to uh, enhance that up. So you just bring that down, change the blend mode again to add or overlay or something like that, and that will um, that will sort of help out quite a bit. Now in this case, what we're going to be using it for is to darken the whole of this side of the screen. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to change my fill. Actually, let's take something from inside there let's just make it a little bit darker come over to this one and we'll do the same thing we use the eyedropper just to make that even nice make that soft light so you see that's now sort of burning out the outside around here and that little grad is actually helping to focus over onto this side at the moment actually I do think it's a little bit in the way it's not kind of quite matching the rest of the colors here it's it's a bit darker it's a bit more um, pronounced so let's uh, actually just rename this for a second so I'll call this skyline enhance even though it's not doing that at the moment but let's do what we've done before and let's bring that down behind the other two layers so where it was before where it is now and now it's sitting a lot better in that area cool let's quickly add a uh, let's leave the extras open because I want to have a look at a couple of those in a second but let's add another little vignette let's add our another darker lips let's focus that over here on this side Again, we can just start to build up these let's call this vignette set this one to soft light as well Pull that down. Maybe to about 40. Again, we can stick that behind the other layers and make sure that it fits in quite well. Cool, so now we're now we're getting somewhere. This is uh this is becoming quite quite interesting now. So let's have a look at another couple of the um couple of the effects we haven't looked at before. Uh, and the first one we're going to be doing is the uh, film flicker. So let's create our new adjustment layer. Let's call this one film flicker. And this is another one of those effects that's come over from um, Film Wash uh, Volume Three, but it's such an important little effect that it's uh, it's come over to Volume Four as well. So um, we've got a, a couple of little controls. We've actually got our little controls going down here. Now what you may get is when you um, come up and apply it for the first time, what you may get is a little window coming up saying that it can't find a particular um, filter. So all you have to do with that one is just hit OK. Everything will work exactly as it, as it should do anyway. Um, so we've got the flicker amount, which is really how much flicker we're going to have. Uh, we've got the flicker variation. So the flicker amount is really the, um, the sort of maximum up and down amount that it's going to be flickering. The flicker variation 
is um, is how far it's going to go in any one sort of step. So at the moment, it's going in uh, the maximum amount is 15, but the maximum we can change between frames is six. Uh, and this is how often it's going to flicker. So if you want it to flicker every every frame, you have that set to one. And if you want it to hold for a certain amount of time, you can set that flicker every X frames up to, uh, to something like two or three. probably a little bit harsh there let's take that back to just where it was with the six so six six and one is is quite a nice uh, uh, sort of sweet spot and we can start to see how that's looking much more like a, uh, a sort of faded faded super 8 film there and let's the the final thing we need is a little bit of fast grain so let's use our fast grain on there let's turn the color off of it Maybe take that down to about eight and take a look at that. Cool, and just think, you know, where we uh, where we came from, which was something fairly dark, fairly unappealing. Really, it didn't have uh, didn't have any sort of life to it. To bring that back in there, well, all of a sudden it's got something a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more of life to it and let's just we can come in and we can start to adjust these a little bit more so a cool thing with a vignette is actually um, we can change where it is at any one at any time we just have to open it up come to our contents here and we click on the the name dark circular vignette we can come in and we can make all the uh, the changes that we need to in regards to size and position uh, if you want to scale it non-uniformly, uh, we can sort of just do that within the regular scale here. So let's uh, let's turn that up a little bit to 100 so you can see that what's going on. Come to our scale here. Just turn off the um, little lock there. Move that to 120 and that stretches it out so it becomes non-uniform now. Uh, and while we're at it, actually, we'll do a final, final one which is again in the vignettes. Let's just do that defocus vignette again. So remember how we use that. Choose the uh, video layer, which is our layer number eight here. And now let's drag that underneath the other ones there. And let's drag that underneath our vignette. Set our track mat to alpha mat. Turn our vignette back on. And we've got a nice defocus going on as well as the other vignettes. And because that's going on underneath the film flicker and the uh, and the uh, and the fast grain, that's going to all sort of just join in with the um, uh, with the rest of the image really nicely. Cool, and that's a nice little effect there, I think. Now, if you come back for the next exercise, what we will be looking at is how we can use um, the Film Wash Color Effects Volume 4 for um, not only video footage, but also graphic stuff, motion graphics. And we'll be looking at how we use that across a, um, a sequence of shots rather than just a, uh, a single shot. So I hope you join me to take a look at the next tutorial.